Hi everyone, my name is Rhoda and today I am going to show you how to make everything bagel seasoning bread. It's an artisan bread where I add everything bagel seasoning into the mix. If you don't like the seasoning, just leave it out. It's that simple. This is a really easy bread to make. It's very forgiving, especially for those who are just starting out and making bread. It doesn't, it's not, um, you know, very, you don't have to knead it or a lot of stuff where a lot of other breads do, like sandwich bread and different things. You'll have a hard crust on the outside of it and it'll be soft on the inside. And it's great with some homemade butter, but if you don't have homemade butter, some all natural butter will be good on it too. But follow along with me and I'll show you how to make my everything bagel seasoning artisan bread. I still sound a little rough and I apologize for that, but my husband and I have been sick again. <laughs> we just got over the flu and now we're getting over COVID, but I, <laughs> I we'll get there. <laughs> I want to make some bread and I, I like the artisan bread and I want something that's got a lot of um, flavor to it. So I got me some everything bagel seasoning here. But I'm going to get this started. I, in my bowl, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. I have two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. One tablespoon of sugar. A teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to mix this together real quick. <clears throat> Most people don't do this, but this is how I, I like to do my bread because I like this throughout the bread. I'm going to go ahead and throw in one heaping tablespoon of everything bagel seasoning. I'm going to mix that up. It just gets some good flavor in it. I have a cup and a half of I mean, it's, it's water that's, yeah, I stuck my finger in it. It's warm enough to where it doesn't burn my finger if I poke my, put my finger in it. Um, I could hold my finger in there, but it's not cold. I guess it's about probably 100 degrees. You don't want it too warm or you'll kill the yeast. It smells really good with that everything bagel seasoning in it. Okay, I'm gonna switch it over to my hand now. See how it's sticky. <laughs> yeah, I like to play with dough. But you can see how sticky it is. That's why I like it. I like it to be like that. But I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the bowl. I wet my hand a little bit so the dough wouldn't stick so bad to it. But just move the dough around in the oil a little bit. And I'm just going to leave it in here to let it rise. 
but you can see how sticky it's it's a wet dough but it makes it it's a nice bread when it's like that it's the way I like it I want to cover my dough and set it on my oven let it rise for a couple hours um, you're only supposed to let it rise for maybe an hour, hour and a half, but I think I might let it go for about two. I got the Dutch oven out that Mama gave me. I'm going to use it today. It was all rusted when I got it, and I got it all reseasoned. See, it's looking good. This was hard to do, this detail. Lord have mercy, that was hard to get seasoned, but I got it all seasoned. The Dutch oven that I have, <coughs> I can't get to the high temps that I want to with my artisan bread. Because some of them they want you to, you know, put in a 450 degree oven or 430 to 450. And at those temps, I have a plastic knob on my lid. It would ruin my knob. So I never, I never do, I, I push it, I feel, at 425. I'm, I'm afraid to go anything hotter than 425 with my current, my other Dutch oven. But this one, I, I don't worry about it too much. And it, it gives it that nice, you know, that long loaf style. But that's what I use this one for, is for the breads now. And it makes me happy. But remember, if your bread is not rising while it's sitting on your stove, if your house is too cool... Mine can be sometimes. I will turn the light on in my oven and I will stick it in the oven and let it finish rising in the oven. Some people actually have a proof setting on their oven. I don't. I do have um, where I have went in and put it on a real the lowest setting, turned my oven on and then turned it off in, within 10 minutes and I opened my door up and let it air out just a few minutes turn my light on then I stuck my bowl in there with the light on so it could continue to proof in there because my house was too cool and that worked really well for me but if you left if I left the oven on warm it would dry out my bread and it would basically cook your bread and slowly you know and it, and it didn't do well it didn't continue to rise like you would want it but bread is forgiving a lot of times just, if it's not proofing, let it just go a little longer. It'll be all right. Some breads, you know, take 12 to 18 hours, depending on what recipe that you use. I like using the artisan bread recipe because it's a, you know, two to three hour rise. And by start to finish, two to three hours start to finish. And sometimes I might let it rise an hour, sometimes two hours. I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> on making sure I get in the oven on a certain time. And it still turns out really good and tasty. So just try it and don't be too hard on yourself when things don't turn out. You, you just gotta try it and, and see where it goes from there. It's been about an hour and a half, so I'm going to go ahead and get this out of here. And got a lot of oil on it, and it's it's pretty wet. But like I said again, that's how I like mine. I like it a little bit moist. I think it bakes really well when it does it that way. And I like to pull it up like it's the different definitions in it. To 
just turn it a little bit. That's all I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to need it anymore or anything. I don't have a bowl the shape of my pan, so I'm going to put it actually in a crock pot. <laughs> I'm just going to pull my sides up, slide it down in here, like that, and I'll let it rise in here while I turn my oven on to 450, put my oven on 450. I already have my Dutch in it. Well, that's warming up. This is going to rise, but I am going to do a little bit more to this. I'm going to put a little bit more seasoning on top. Also, a little bit of cheese. Little Parmesan cheese on top. And I'm just going to stick the lid on it for now. Let it rise. Another 30 minutes until it's, until it's ready. Doubled in, well, it's doubled. Stick it in here. Make sure you got a good seal on your lid when you place it in there. Because it'll steam a little bit while it's cooking. So. And set your timer for 30 minutes. Time to take the lid off. It's been in there 30 minutes. Mm, it smells delicious. We'll let it go for another 10 minutes. It's time to get the bread out of the oven. That's where you want to be careful. Don't burn yourself. I'm just going to leave my Dutch oven in there. Of course, turn the oven off and just let it cool down in the oven naturally. But this is the bread. Ooh, it's hot. Doesn't that look delicious though? So, oh, it smells so good. It's still hot. Mmm. <laughs> it's hard on the outside and it'll be nice and soft on the inside. You want it to cool down before you cut into it because you've cut into it at this stage while it's still hot, then you're going to have a gooey center. It's still cooking. So let it cool down completely before you cut into it. Look at that. That's squishy. But it's still it's hard on the outside. Not real hard, but mm, it smells delicious. 
I can smell the garlic and all those spices. Mmm. And then the, the cheese on the outside. It didn't burn. I wasn't sure about it. I've never put Parmesan cheese on the outside of it. I thought it was going to burn, but it didn't. It looks really good. So, hope you enjoy this recipe. And until next time, God bless you all. And make sure you try it. It's simple. Mm. You gotta try it. That's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs>